Since I was a little kid, I have been obsessed with hunting a whitetail deer. And over the last 30 years, I've learned that there are very few places in this country where you can go chase a truly giant whitetail in a low fence environment. But one of those places is a small area in South Texas called the Golden Triangle. And I've dreamed of coming here for years. And this really is a whitetail paradise. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Bow Life. You know, normally when I'm whitetail hunting, it's us on our own leases, hanging our own stands, food plotting, running cameras, doing it the hard way, the way I like to do it. This week is the complete opposite of that. I'm getting to go to a place that I've heard about and dreamed about hunting for years, and that's the Cactus Jack Ranch, right in the middle of the Golden Triangle in South Texas. I've been to South Texas before, but I've never been able to hunt big deer in South Texas. It's always been a management hunt. This time, I finally get to chase some of these giant South Texas bucks. I've got my good friend, Mr. Keith Kelly, who invited me on this hunt, gonna be there hunting, uh, Jake, Richard, uh, and our hunt winner, Josh Couch. So, Jerry Wascom, Michael Wascom, his son, the owners of the Cactus Shack Ranch, Jake, all you guys, Thank you so much for the invite. I am literally beside myself to get to come. But before we got the hunt started, we sat down with Mr. Jerry and he told us a little bit more about Cactus Jack Ranch. The Cactus Jack is a little over 4,850 acres. The ranch has pretty sound brush. In fact, it's a, it's a really good habitat for deer here. What we've done is with the feeding program, we've upped our population density. So that allows us to run more deer than the natural habitat would normally support. So as a result of that, we've essentially doubled the deer population. The more baby bucks you have born, if you can feed them, the more big deer you're gonna grow. And I'm a believer in the bell curve because the number of big deer is like nothing I've ever seen. You know, people ask me all the time, and you know, I hunted South Texas for 30 years before I ended up with this place. And you know, if you would have told me, I couldn't have believed it. And again, it's a result of the strong habitat, the great management by the previous owners, you know, combined with what we're doing now with the ranch. You know, Jerry, Michael, and Jake down here at Cactus Jack Ranch are as smart of individuals as you will meet, um, and especially when it comes to whitetail, and they are incorporating all that into this ranch. And, you know, Texas is where deer management really started, and they were years ahead of the rest of the country when it comes to managing big whitetails and growing big whitetails. And I feel like here at Cactus Shack Ranch and a few other ranches here in South Texas, they're still way ahead of the rest of the country. I mean, they're not shooting deer here at Cactus Jack Ranch until they're seven and a half, period, um, which is crazy. And they, these are all native deer, that low fence ranch, not a pen hunt. Um, these deer can come and go as they please, and they are growing legitimate 200 inchers. Jerry just killed, before we got here, a deer they called Triple Threat, over 200 inches with a bow. Um, just an incredible, incredible whitetail. And his son Michael is after a deer they call Taser, which is also over 200 inches. And I'm hoping that we get to be here whenever he kills him. So the first couple days for us at Cactus Shack have been kind of slow as far as mature deer, shooter deer sightings. We've seen a lot of deer, just not the one we were after. Um, but we did get news that Josh Couch, our hunt winner, had shot a big buck, um, heard he fell in the field and we couldn't wait to get back to camp and check him out. I think we started trying to kill him when he was seven. He's probably <laughs> 10 now. Didn't go far here. 
fell inside. Like a, like a pond of like a pond of where he was laying. Really? Yeah. So Levi Morgan 261 put it on him, he said. <laughs> Got him by that rabbit good. head and put him in a real deer head. <laughs> <laughs> Jake was like, man, this one didn't even get out of sight. I mean, he, just, nice. he went over to the edge of the field and started, started dancing and blood just pouring out of him and he just dumped over right there in sight. It was pretty awesome. How far was it? It was shot. Uh, Tough shot. Oh, oh. Good. <laughs> good. That's, just, that's just the kind we like. Top pin, that's right. That's what Top you want. pin. So Halloween morning was the first time that we had seen a shooter and me and Mike are sitting in the blind. I look out one of the windows and there stands a giant seven and a half year old typical whitetail that they call Skipper. So this buck literally took my breath away. Crazy main beams, just a huge typical whitetail, but he was only in the open for less than 10 seconds. He just cut the corner of the field just long enough for us to see him, get a good look at him, and then he vanished into the brush again. So we're gonna go back to camp, talk to Mr. Jerry, try to get a game plan for this afternoon. So, I think since it's, he's an afternoon deer, yep. let's go after Let's do it. Yeah. That wind going to change tonight, I think. I think so. Yeah. I Perfect. I'm all. I'm all about that. And we just may swap back and forth. Yeah. That, that way, give them a little rest. Yep. So that afternoon we didn't have the wind to hunt Skipper, so we were in a blind hunting a deer they call Crunch, who's an absolute giant, and we hadn't seen a deer, period, all evening. And then right at last light, I look up, and there he stands, back in the brush, one of the biggest framed whitetails I've ever seen in my life. So Crunch didn't like that setup at all. He was nervous from the get-go, never came out in the open, um, went right back where he came from. But we feel like we've got our two target deer pinpointed, Skipper, Crunch, those are the two we're gonna focus on. And we're gonna kinda let the wind tell us 
where to go. We'll be bouncing back and forth depending on which way it's blowing, hunting both of those deer. The morning of November 1st is a day I'll never forget, a hunt I'll never forget. Me and Mike are sitting in the blind after Skipper and Jake is several hundred yards away in a tower just with a camera. And we get a text from Jake that says, hey, I'm filming Skipper and he's headed your way. So me and Micah's heart rate instantly go up. I've got my bow in hand and we're waiting on him to step out. So all these deer were on edge and when I shot, Skipper ducked a mile and I hit him kind of high in the shoulder blade, um, still in the lungs, but it locked him up and, and almost acted like a spine shot um, when he hit the ground. So I instantly got another arrow in him and I can't wait to get my hands on what might be my biggest typical ever. We just killed a giant typical team. It's called Skipper. And I'm going to see what he is, because he's a giant. Oh my goodness, bro. Guys, here he is. One of my biggest typical whitetails ever. Just a giant chocolate horn tin. Um, they named him Skipper. He's seven and a half years old and just, just a giant, heavy, in, insane main beams. Um, you know, I just, I don't feel like I deserve <laughs> the opportunity to come hunt animals like this, but I'm just so thankful. So thankful to the Lord that I'm a bow hunter and thankful to all the people that made this possible. Mr. Keith Kelly, one of my best friends and all the guys here at Cactus Jack, I sure hope I get to come back sometime because I have had a blast. What a monster. What do you think? What a stud. <laughs> Holy crap. Thanks, Congrats, man. man. What a Thank deer. You. He's a freaking beast. Holy dude. smokes. Look at that time, man. I know it. Beams are He's insane. He's got beams for days. So I've been known to make a few bets in hunting camp, and this one was no different. I made a bet with my brother Micah that if I killed a buck over 170 inches, I would jump in this freezing cold pool that's outside of where we're staying. And after the official scorer in camp, Jake, scored him up, it looks like I'm gonna be eating my words and I'm gonna be jumping in this ice cold pool. Well, I made a bet, said if I shot a deer over 170, I'd do a flying squirrel into the pool. I'm still not sure that he scored it right, but you ready? Yeah. All right. <laughs> don't let that water fool you even though we're in south texas it was freezing freezing cold however i did it with a smile on my face and i would jump in a frozen ocean every hunt to kill a deer like that um, but a couple weeks after we left i got a text and a call from michael saying taser was down after 26 days of hunting that one deer and not really even seeing him 
he finally got it done and lucky for us, he got the whole thing on film. shot taser you can see him out there in the field he never made it out and he's big he's real big, big. giant he's real big let's, let's go look at this rascal oh. Ooh, lee crap that schwacker ate him up man at 261 oh yeah Ooh. dude you gotta call your pops. He's gonna be fired up. He's on an airplane, man. Oh, oh is he? He's on an airplane. Oh. oh my lord, Jake. Oh my. <laughs> man, Michael, congrats on one of the biggest whitetails I've ever seen in my life on film anywhere. Uh, way to stick it out and get it done. And what a week, guys. I mean, Cactus Jack, from accommodations to the great people, fellowship, food, giant whitetails, um, it just delivered all the way around. I, I can't wait to come back. And after our hunt was over, Mr. Jerry brought in one of the helicopter pilots, took us up and gave us a tour of the whole ranch. What a beautiful place full of monster whitetails. And I can't wait to be back here next year.